Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at data manipulation instructions. In this video, we're going to look at rotate operations. Okay, the MSP430 provides four different rotate instructions. Uh, they have rotate left. There's two versions of the rotate left. One of them is going to be rotate left arithmetically, and one of them is going to be rotate left through carry. And <clears throat> the difference between these is how bits are shifted in and out of the destination. So the arithmetic shift left is going to fill in the least significant bit with a zero, and it's going to shift the most significant bit into the carry flag. Okay. If you rotate through carry, uh, you'll notice that this is actually a continuous loop. So the carry is like the, the ninth bit of a byte rotate or the 17th bit, and it just will rotate continuously through it. Uh, if you look at rotate right arithmetically, this is an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> the least significant bit rotates into the carry, and then the most significant bit just stays, it just copies itself into here. Uh, now, you might wonder why in the world do you need that. Uh, this is actually used for sign extending, uh, which is where you have a negative or a positive number. And what, you're going to manipulate it. Maybe you divide it by two or something like that, and you want to extend the sign. So it will. if you're a negative number, you have a one in the most significant bit, and you just keep a one there while you rotate everything right. Same thing with a positive number. Uh, and we'll actually take a look at an example of, of dividing and multiplying using rotates. The rotate right through carry is, again, just a continuous loop that allows you to use the carry in this chain and you rotate through. Okay, so let's just do a couple. Uh, let's, uh, let's do an example where we just rotate something like crazy uh, using the arithmetic rotates. And let's go ahead and create a new project here. And I'm going to go file new oh, file. Oh, why is this? File new <laughs> CCS project, and I got my MCU set up. I'm going to make this a uh, ASM ALU, and what should we call this? But let's actually make one project for the arithmetic rotates, and then we'll do a different project for the other one, uh, just to kind of keep things a little bit separate so we can go reference back to them. So let's do an empty only. All right, and okay, here we are. We are in our main loop, and let's do a main, and we'll come down here and do a uh, jump main, and let's go ahead and start a little, uh, let's put something in R4, so let's do a move up B, and let's let's do a 8-bit operation so that it does, we can rotate nine, eight or nine times and actually see a bit and move around in here. So let's put this into R4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 into R4, and then let's rotate it. Now we're going to be doing arithmetic uh, rotates, and what that means is that you're going to, the carry is going to be involved in here. Okay, so there's, there's absolutely, the carry will be here. So we want to make sure we know what's in the carry. Uh, so I'm going to introduce a new instruction, which is called CLRC. Now, we, we covered this when we looked briefly at all the instructions that were in the MSP430, but this one, we haven't used this one before. This one means clear carry. So it allows you to, it's essentially a bit clear uh, on the particular, on the, the carry bit within the status register. So this is an emulated instruction. It's if you look at what this actually gets assembled into, it's replaced with a bit clear and a mask corresponding to the carry bit. But it, this is read more readable. So what this is going to do is it this actually just says I'm going to do c is equal to zero, and that way we know what's in the carry bit so that we can start with a deterministic value. Okay, so I've got. This pattern is in R4, and then I'm going to have the, the carry flag is clear. Let's go ahead and do an RLAB uh, byte-wise instruction on R4. And this is going to rotate it, and what you'll see is after the first rotate, we'll watch this one move over. And let's go ahead and rotate it uh, seven times, and then... We'll do it an eighth time, and we'll see that one actually move into the carry position. And then let's do it a ninth time just to prove to ourselves that nothing is actually coming in here. Okay, And what I mean by that is the zero is coming in, and the carry never comes back around. Okay, So we should see that pattern. So 
we can just copy and paste this. So this is going to be two. Uh, let's get this right here. Two, and then this is going to be three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we'll watch that pattern cruise through. And then let's do another one where we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and copy that whole thing. Let's do this. Now we'll do a second pattern where instead of doing, having a one in the least position, least significant position of our, of our starting seed, and we'll make that our five. What we're going to do is we will rotate right. Probably be easier just to nuke all that. So I got my starting seed. I clear the carry, and I'm going to do a rotate right arithmetically bite operation on R5. Okay? And let's go ahead and do we, – we only need to do eight of those because if you remember how this works, we're going to – rotate. it's a single ring. So if we do eight or nine of these, we should see the thing come back. So two, three, four, five, six, seven – eight, nine, why not? Okay, so there we have it. Uh, those are a whole bunch of rotates and we rotate left, we rotate right, save it up, let's fire up the debugger and let's see what this looks like. We kind of hope we know what it's supposed to look like, but okay, I got my MSP430 plugged in. I'm firing up the debugger. It's assembling it, it's linking it, it's creating the executable object file, it is downloading it, it is starting a new debug session, and I'm finally here, I care about R4, and I care about the carry flag. So I got my two things that I care about right here. Let's see if I can shrink this up so that we don't have too much on the screen and it's a little easier to see. Okay, so there we go. Go ahead, as always, set a breakpoint at the first instruction of our main loop. We run down here, and now we're ready to step through. First instruction is going to initialize the, the R4, and now let's rotate it left. So we rotate it left. All right, well, cl clear the carry, and now let's rotate it left. Notice this one is walking to the left, so left, 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 <laughs> left. And then it went in the carry, and it went in the carry. You see it rotated out to the left and then went in the carry. And if I do this again... Boom, the carry is then, rot a zero is rotated into the carry, and nothing comes back in. Okay, so we prove to ourselves that zero is as being shifted into the least significant position or rotated in. Okay, let's do another one. So in this situation now, we want to look at R5. So let's go ahead and step. We seed up R5, and then we're going to go to the right, or we'll clear the carry to the right, 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 to the right. To the right, to the right, to the right. Now notice that it filled up with ones. Is that what we expected? That is what our pattern was. That is what we kind of expected. But the reason it did that was because uh, we were rotating the MSB back into itself. Okay, so we proved to ourselves that we know how to use a rotate left arithmetic and a rotate right arithmetic. That's fun. Uh, just to keep that kind of separate from the next one. Let's do one where we rotate right through the carry. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do a new CCS project. And what we'll do here is we'll 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 call this something different. Uh, let's call this uh, ASM, ALU, rotate, I like the caps, rotate, uh, THRC, through carry. Okay, empty assembly only. Okay, we're back to where we want to be. Now let's do an, this example here. So come down here. Let's do this one. I'm going to rotate us a, a full ring. So in this situation, notice that I'm going to start a seed, rotate it left all the way through. It'll go out to the carry, and, we'll, and then it'll rotate and come back in. So we see a full ring rotate. And then same thing here. We'll rotate it right through the carry, and we'll see it come back around. Okay. So we come down to our main program, and let's fire it up. Let's go main. And we'll come down here, and we'll go bop, 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 bop. Uh, jump main. All right, let's start up a seed. So what we'll do is we'll go move.b, just like last time, pound. Um, let's go pound one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, binary. And let's put it in R, why not, six, which I don't know why we're using that as a different project, but no, who cares? Clear up the carry, and now let's do our rotate. Uh, let's go rotate left through carry, 
bite-wise operation in R6. Okay, and let's do that at least nine times. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, why not 10, why not? Okay, and that'll show us that this ring is moving around. And then let's do an example where we do uh, rotate right through carry. Okay, and that little fella right there is a typo. Don't worry about that, that'll be fixed. So I'm gonna move <laughs> uh, pound one, and then I got seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Binary into R7, and then we'll do rotate. Or no, let's clear the carry. Make sure that, that we know it's in the carry. And then we'll go rotate right through carry, bite-wise operation, and we'll mess with R7. Okay, and let's do that at least nine times. Then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Throw in one more and ain't gonna hurt nobody. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Okay, so go ahead and save that, buddy. Go ahead and let's hit the debug button. That is going to assemble. It's going to link. It's doing all of its stuffs. And here we are. Okay, let's take a look. Go ahead and set a breakpoint at the first instruction of our main program and move down to there. Okay, now what I'm care what I care about here is I want to see the carry flag, and I want to see R six. Okay, so here's R six, and there's the carry flag. And let's go ahead and step. I start my seed. That's my starting value in R six. I go ahead and I clear the carry, and now I'm going to start rotating left. And what I'm looking for is this ring behavior. So see how it's it's marching to the left? So it's marching, 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 going into the carry. Did you see it go in the carry? And then it came back around, and, and it just continues forever. Okay, So it did the pattern that we care about. And then this is going to be rotate right through carry. Okay, so now this example, we want to see rotate right through carry, and we're gonna look at R7 this time. So okay, so I'll go ahead and I'm gonna step, I load my seed into R7, and now I'm gonna clear the carry, and then I'm gonna rotate right. See it marching to the right? It's going to the right, to the right, to the right. Now it's gonna come out, here it goes, into the carry, bomb, and then back into the destination, and, we, and we're done. Okay, awesome. So yeah, pretty simple, uh, pretty simple in, indeed. So I'll go ahead and stop that. Uh, now here is a very interesting thing that you can do with rotates. You can, did you know that if you rotate left and rotate right, you have the effect of multiplying or dividing by two? Have you ever heard of this? So this is kind of fascinating. So let's look at an example. Uh, consider this, if I had the number 25, okay? And I had a byte representation of that. This is the binary for 25. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. What would happen if I rotated that left and filled it with a zero on the right? Okay, filling the least significant bit with a zero doesn't have any impact on sign or anything like that. But look at the new code. It's 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. That actually is the binary code for 50. I multiplied by two by rotating left arithmetic. And then what if I did it again? I would have 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. I got 100. That's the binary code for 100. And then if I did it again, I get 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. That's the binary code for 200. So I'm actually able to, to, to multiply by 2 by rotating left arithmetic. Now, of course, where it falls apart is once you start rotating 1s out of the actual destination. So then as soon as this, this most significant 1 actually rotates out, it, nothing it, it's gone, right? And so then the number falls apart. But as long as you have enough bits within your destination, you can do a simple multiply by two. The same thing works for dividing by two. So if you rotate right, uh, check this out. If I had a, a 224, let's say, and that binary code for that is 111 and then 0000. zero, 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 zero. If I rotate that right and I fill with a zero, I divide it by two. So the, this is the binary code for 112. And then this is, and if I did it again, that's the binary code for 56. And if I did it again, that's a binary code for 28, and that's a binary code for 14, and that's a binary code for 7. Once the bits, the ones start getting shifted out to the right, then you start losing accuracy and eventually it'll fall apart. Because, so for example, you know, if you divide 7 by 2, you get 3.5. But when I lost that bit, the bi binary code I was left with is 3. And then I did it again and I got 1. So it falls apart as soon as you run out of space, but it does work as long as you have enough bits.
Yeah, so this is a very, very powerful thing because a lot of MCUs don't have multiplies or divides. And you just like, well, I want to multiply by eight. And you're like, well, you can't. It's like, yes, I can. I got to rotate. So let's look at this. Uh, let's go ahead and fire up another project just so we have something that is uh, consistent or, or something we can refer back to. So let's go ahead and fire up an ASM ALU and then we'll do a mul2 and div2. And let's see what happens, okay? Don't, the, so the multiply, well, let's just do it. Main, and we'll go uh, jump main. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this exact example. So come over here, and that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So let's load up. Uh, Let's do this, let's load, move B, and let's just do this all in decimal, okay? Just so we can see it. So I'm gonna move 25 into R8, okay? And I'm going to then do a rotate, let's clear the carry, and then let's do a rotate left A, rotate left arithmetic B, bite-wise, and I'll do that on R8. <clears throat> and I should be able to say, multiply by two, I get 50, Multiply by two, I get 100. Multiply by two, I get 200. Multiply again, and I and I lost my bit off the right, <laughs> off the left. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Then let's do this example and see if this works. So then let's do a move dot B and let's put uh, 224 into R9, and then we got to clear the carry. The only trick on this one is this is a rotate right. Okay, so it's going to be rotate right, and if you look at your instructions, we have to. We ha the carry always comes in, right? So we want to, or actually, we want to rotate right, but we don't want the most significant bit to come in. So we want to use a rotate right through carry because then if we clear the carry before each rotate, we can guarantee that a zero comes in, okay? So that's why we have to use a rotate right through carry. <clears throat> so when I do a, a clear the carry and then I do rotate right carry bitwise on R9, that is going to divide by two. And so I need both of these each time because I never know what's going into the carry. So this is going to be divide by two, okay, and then divide by two, divide by two. <clears throat> this. Okay, and let's do this one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll do a couple more. Okay. Okay, so we got eight or nine of those in there. <clears throat> All right, fire that session up. This will be the last example that we do. And it loads up. We come down here, go ahead and set a breakpoint right here. Go ahead and run to it. And now what I want to look at is R8 and R9. And I know the carry is important, but I can just go ahead and I'm going to put both of these into decimal format. So I go boom, decimal. All right, so here we go. Watch what, watch this. This is going to be sweet. So I go boom, I got that. I'm going to go ahead and step. That moves my value 25 in there. Now watch this. I'm going to clear the carry and I'm going to rotate to the right. 50, 100, 200, it's working. Rotate right arith arithmetically is multiplying by two. Now what happens when I do it one more time? 144, well, that's because I rotated the one out of the least significant position and I started losing it. So I ran out of space. All right, let's do this next one. I load up R9 with 224 and now I'm gonna rotate it, or excuse me, I was rotating left to multiply by two. Now I'm gonna rotate right, so I do it and watch this, boom, clear the carry. It's 112. Clear the carry again. It's 56. Clear the carry again. It's 28. And then it's 14. And then it's 7. And as soon as you get to an odd number, you're out of luck because then you can't have 0.5s. And so it goes to 3. It goes to 1. And then it's 0. And it's done. Okay. So that's it. That's pretty cool. That's rotates. Those are the rotate instructions within the MSP430 and some useful things that you can do with them. All right. Remember, as always, subscribe to my channel to stay latest, stay up to date with the latest videos, and I'll talk to you later.